Welcome to the Ring of Faith. Last week, Tim and Diana shared how their marriage was almost over. Miraculously, at their darkest moment, God spoke to Tim through his godly wife, Diane. Let's pick back up with Tim and Diana Akers. Nobody for the rest of my life will be able to tell me that God's not real Amen. because I just met him face to face. Amen. You know, I, 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 I could have just as easily been taken up into a UFO and been one of those guys that says, I'm telling you, aliens are real. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what you people think. Yeah, and yeah. I, don't, I don't care how crazy you think I yeah. am. I met an alien, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. this was the same kind of thing. You can argue with me all day. He spoke to me. Amen. And so when I, I felt like I had to obey, but then this is how, this is how kind and gracious God is within, not within weeks or months, within a couple of days, mm -hmm my feelings started changing. Amen. He started teaching Amen. us about our words and, and how Amen. our words, he said, you start speaking words of life over her and you start telling her she's beautiful. I'm like, well, I don't feel that way. <laughs> and he goes, I don't care if you feel that yeah, way. Exactly. Just say the words anyway. Amen. And I'm like, okay. And within 48 hours, mm -hmm. I looked at her. She was walking across the room one day, pick up a coffee cup off the table, you know, go put it in the sink. Mm -hmm. She didn't even know I was watching her. And I watched her walk across the room and I went, well, gosh, she's just an angel. How have I missed this all these years? Mm -hmm. And then I went, uh, what, what, where did that come from? Yeah, yeah. And I could almost hear God laughing at me. Mm. You know, it was like, and he was like, see? Well, and I <laughs> and it all changed. Scales have been taken Yeah, off. scales have been taken mm -hmm. off. It was unbelievable. Praise God. And, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and um, the, the day after he called a friend and... And he said something very perfect. Mm -hmm. He said, it was never about my marriage to Diana. It was about my marriage to God. Amen. That's so good. That's good. And, That's good. and it, it wasn't um, weeks or months. It was days. And, mm -hmm. and It all changed. Our whole relationship changed. And God's a God of restoration. Amen. And he will restore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he has. That's mm -hmm. so good. Well, we're going to take a quick break. But when we get back, I want to talk real briefly about where do we go from here? We'll be right back. This is Diana. She hosts an annual event that is empowering women through fashion. She and her team of volunteers collect and sort countless donations in her home. And then she opens her doors and lets anyone shop absolutely free. This is Fashion It Forward. Next year, our goal is to fill a warehouse so we can share this experience with you. To learn how you can be involved, please visit fashionitforwardnashville.com. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Today we're talking with Tim and Diana Akers, and we just heard their amazing, powerful story of restoration and forgiveness. Yes. And when we left off, I had mentioned, you know, where do we go from here. So I know you mentioned the first couple days, but what really were the steps that you took to, to put this thing back together? Well, you have to understand, it was like when this happened, I mean, God had never used me like that before. Mm -hmm. So this was really odd yeah. to me, you know, and so we just kind of hunkered in <laughs> like, you know, we need to pray. Like yeah. this is this is serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, well, can I interrupt here? Because uh -huh. I I'll, I'll what you to to really get to the answer that you're looking for, you have to understand that the my son this and my son that that night that was five hours. Praise God. Wow. We I sat in the we call it the red chair. We don't have that <laughs> chair anymore. <laughs> but 
but I was sitting in this. We had this. The hot seat. Yeah, it was the hot seat. The only seat. The only hot seat. (laughs) And and it was just like a constant flow of just Holy Spirit downloads, and it was all in third person. It was all I was being called my son the whole night, and we went to bed that night. You know, it was late, eleven midnight Mm -hmm. maybe, Mm -hmm. and um, about four in the morning. She said the Holy Spirit woke her up. She, she, and she had her hand mm-hmm. on me, and she was mm-hmm. praying for me. Mm-hmm. And the Holy Spirit started to give her more. And she didn't. And I want- thought, well, you know, I can't wake him up. He's asleep. And so I went in there to uh, the little den, and you know, I had a stack of unused journals, you know, because with dyslexia, I'm not going to write. <laughs> and you know, everyone gives you journals for gifts, and so. I started writing what I was hearing and what I was seeing, and and then Tim gets up and it was eight or ten pages front and back of and, just my son, my son, my son. But it was, and you know, everyone can hear from God, mm-hmm. everyone, and 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 you know, I I thought I'm hearing God again, and so I started writing and. Every day at 4.30, God woke me up for a year and a half. Wow. Thanks, God. With, with we can show you the journals. We have stacks mm-hmm. just Thanks full God. of longhand that just teaching. It's teaching. Thank All God. it was was just teaching. Wow. And Basically what he said, and it, this is what I love about God, is he's, he's got such a great sense of humor. He, te- he teases me and jokes with me. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And he said, you're 50 years old. you got a lot of catching up to do. And, and so I'm like... Bring it on, yeah, and yeah. he and he said to her, "This is what was really precious to me, is that that prayer that I said I prayed all those years. I wish you'd come down here and talk to me." You know, he told her in the writing. He said, "And now for the messenger, he that he would switch gears, and he said, stay faithful in this because this is a prayer I'm answering for Tim. That and, prayer that you've been praying yeah. for 27 years, and so for a year and a half." God spoke to me. Boy, did he answer my prayer. So Praise he's God. answering your prayer, and at the same time, he's birthing something in you. Yes, because yeah. this is all new to me. Wow. You know, I was just desperate, and I just needed more Jesus on mm-hmm. the couch for a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and this is what's amazing. When you just saturate yourself in the Word, the Word becomes a part of you. Amen. The living Word is in you. And, and so... At that time, I was doing a Bible study at my home and uh, did that for seven years wow. and started the Bible study before our miracle. But that's another story. <laughs> and um, it, at that time, I'll just tell you one little miracle that happened. Um, we're at the Bible study the next Tuesday. And I said, Tim, we got to be transparent. We have to tell these women this. And we shared what had happened, and um, they were very gracious, Mm -hmm. very loving, very supportive, Mm -hmm. just wanted to pray and just be there for us. Praise God. And um, something really bizarre happened. Not that this doesn't sound bizarre, what I've been talking about. Uh, This adds to the bizarreness. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. The cherry on top of the bizarreness. And just know, you know, Holy Spirit's not kooky. No. Yeah. Yeah. We are. We are. (laughs) He's not. He's not. Um, And that there's just a sweet spirit there that night of forgiveness, restoration. And and, uh, that was kind of like, you know, we're in Revelations, it says to share your testimony. Yeah. And that's what we were doing that night. Yeah. And, right there. and it was kind of over and everybody's like, oh, you know, just loving on you. And I felt something like drip on my shirt. And I was like, well, what is that? And, and it kept dripping down. And my whole side of my hair was completely oily. Mm-hmm. And there was oil coming out of my temple. I know that sounds weird, no, and it saying, even sounds that's, that's, weird for me to even say it. No, it's not. That's, that's the Holy Spirit. Miracle. It was that's, a miracle. It's a manifestation. That's a manifestation. Yeah. But it was, it was showing me mm-hmm. God's, 
God's doing this. Amen. This, he's our counselor. Amen. He's, he's everything. And that's how we approached this. And, and we allowed the counselor mm -hmm. to be our marriage counselor. Praise God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And the Bible says in Colossians 2.10 that it's we're good. complete in him too. Like mm -hmm. they said, they, their problem wasn't, wasn't necessarily with each other. It was that relationship with God. Mm -hmm. When you get complete in Him, then that can, that's when your marriage can start working. Romans mm -hmm. 5, 5 says that God's love is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Until you have a revelation of how much God loves you, you can't give it away. Mm -hmm. Like he's saying, he was talking, he was having all these challenges saying, you know, I need a better marriage and all these things going through his mind because he didn't know how much God loves him. Maybe there's somebody out there right now. Mm -hmm. you, you're thinking about walking away from your marriage mm -hmm. and then, you know, and you, you're, you're, you're straying or whatever. You need that revelation that God loves mm -hmm. you. It's not about how you feel. Mm -hmm. It's about what His Word says about you. Mm -hmm. He loved you so much that He gave His only begotten Son mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. When you receive that love, get into that Word just mm -hmm. like she did. Renew your mind to how much He loves you. And let the transforming power of that living Word come on the inside of you. It'll change you from the inside out. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Sean talks about greater love has no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. And I feel like forgiveness is laying down our own lives for someone yes. else. It's laying down how we're feeling, mm -hmm. like he was just talking about. Mm -hmm. It's laying down what we want to do, what made sense in your mind that mm -hmm. night. <laughs> you laid that down mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you laid down how you were feeling and just let the Holy Spirit take control because yes. there's no greater love than to do that. And so I love that you have been able to take this journey, this journey of mercy and forgiveness and help other people. Mm -hmm. You're being so transparent today and we appreciate that because that's what's gonna help people. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Getting up here and mm -hmm. saying, I grew up in church and if we had left it there mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. never gone anywhere else, that's nice mm -hmm. and that's good, but there's a whole lot of people out there going, Okay, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> or I've gone through all these things. I'm a crackhead. I mean, that's not going to help me. What's going to help me get out of where I'm at? Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate that. And I know this was um, a gift that you had given me over mm -hmm. the summer, which I think is awesome. And oh, it's thank this you. little devotional book on forgiveness. It is. Um, and it's got some wonderful quotes in here and scripture and some places where you can write down. Um, so how did this come about? Because this is a long way from that night. That's a long <laughs> way from that night. Tim and I uh, spoke at a, a marriage conference and I thought, oh, I need to, we need to do something to, to have a tool yes. to give them. Yes. And, and so my daughter's the one who does all the graphics and all of our photography. So I'm like, uh, we need to do this. And she's like, I have two kids. Uh, when, when am I going to do this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. she came she over. She a trooper. And oh, we, yeah. we, we did this. And, um, and it's just some of the scriptures that God, uh, where he, he made them real to me mm. about forgiveness. Mm. Because, like I said, I struggled with forgiveness because... I was so offended mm -hmm. most of our marriage mm -hmm. and and that offense was justified in, in my mind mm -hmm. and so ish. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so so then that unchecked offense turns into a really ugly unforgiveness bitterness bitterness and unforgiveness so God had to teach me how to forgive, mm -hmm. and and no one wants to do it mm -hmm. because we all feel right. It's, like, a it's a choice. It's a choice, and so some of the scriptures that God showed me, uh, they're in there, and and uh, especially like the Lord's Prayer, and mm -hmm. it's wonderful, you know. Mm -hmm. But then at the end, right after it says you got to forgive, <laughs> but then the one I really loved was about. You know, you can say to that mountain, go cast it to the sea and it'll be done if you mm. believe. And I'm like, yes, God, yes, that's what Unless I need. Unless you haven't forgiven. Uh, you have, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, that doesn't apply to me. <laughs> and so, so you. Let me just interject something here because there was a real powerful lesson that the, that the Holy Spirit spoke to me during that, those early 
those just those first couple of days, you know, there was some real foundational things about forgiveness. You know, he had spent a year with her, mm -hmm. getting her to let go of everything. So she was forgiving me, but I had a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, I think there's a common thing in most marriages, even in Christian marriages. I think, I think we all have these things that we cling to that are that are almost like entitlements. Mm -hmm. And it's the little things. Mm -hmm. It's the little things. Oh, he left his socks on the floor. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, why should I forgive him for that? Because that's just not right. Yeah, he yeah, needs yeah. to pick up his socks, right? Yeah. You know, there were there were lots of little goofy things like that that I that that would just things she would do that would irritate me, and I would over and over and over again say the same things, and I and it's and it's all things like not major things, things that have just become common in conversations mm -hmm. about marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just the way husbands and wives talk about each other. Well, it just drives me crazy when he does that. Mm -hmm. oh, it just makes me mad when she does this. Mm -hmm. And God spoke to me one day, and, I, and it was in no uncertain terms. It was like being verbally Back in the red chastised chair. By, Back your, in the red chair. by your daddy. Back in the red you know, chair. like you, you ever get that talking to from your father when you were a little kid and you're just like, yes, her daddy, <laughs> yes, her daddy, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was that kind of a moment. And he, and he said, listen to me, son. He said, you have no rights. You have no rights. Everything that you're complaining about, my, his answer to me was, so. Hmm. And he said, you exist to serve me first mm -hmm. and her second mm -hmm. and then your children and then everybody else. Mm -hmm. And only then do your needs come into it. But he said, really, you have no rights. And he said, it's just like I said, if, if, you know, if I ask you to stay in a miserable marriage, well, are you going to get mad at her because, you know, she leaves her clothes on the floor of the closet or she doesn't finish the laundry or something like that. It's like, forgive her mm. and, and serve her. It's like, go pick up the laundry yourself. Mm. And he started teaching me about how many of these little bitty things that by themselves are nothing. They're, it's like, well, you think to yourself, well, what's the big deal about that? I, you know, I'm not going to get that mad about that. But when there's a hundred of them, mm, there up. begins over, over long years of marriage, there builds these walls and these, this callus, on, this thick callus on your heart mm. where you're, you become so embittered with each other. It's like there's this divide arises between the two of you. Mm. And I'm, I'm telling you on the day that our miracle happened and in the days following, that was, that was like a supernatural deliverance to have those walls just shattered and, mm. and let, letting go of all the little things that used to drive us both crazy about mm -hmm. each other. Mm. We both suddenly had such tender hearts and it's kind of like, oh, I'll get that for you. It became more about serving each Praise other. God. That's where forgiveness starts. Mm, exactly. mm. You know, it's easy to, to kind of like get hung up on the major offenses and go, oh, I just, well, I know I have to forgive that person. You know, it's like you can focus on that and you, you can tell yourself you forgive that person, but really the root of it lies in all the little foxes that mm. spoil the vineyard. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. real so good. That's, that's, real good. that's real good. That's good. And, and it's, a, it's a transformation process. It's all about renewing your mind over time, right. not overnight. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've got a new um, devotional coming out here. Mm -hmm. It's a 30-day guide to transforming your thoughts and emotions, which, yes. I mean, I don't know who couldn't benefit yes. from this. Yes. <laughs> I mean, this is a great little uh, grouping of uh, scripture and also encouragement mm -hmm. to people. And so this is your newest That's project. The newest. This is yes. about to come out. Mm -hmm. So how can they get a hold of this project? They can go on the website, dianaacres.com or .org. Okay. And, and they can find it there. And I'd love to hear from them. Any, nice. you know, and you can find me on Instagram. Um, and, and it's the Diana Acres Instagram is all devotionals. I'll pray so, God. yeah. You know, the awesome. Bible says Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you'll prove out what that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God is. This is the Christian walk once you've received, received Jesus. 
is renewing your mind to what his word says. Mm -hmm. And that's that life transforming power that comes on the inside. Mm -hmm. This is a great journal to get into to help you to start that. A lot of times as a Christian, you don't know what to do, mm -hmm. where to start. Mm -hmm. This is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. You get in there, she'll give you some scriptures. You renew your mind to that. And I let God's word transform you. The Bible says in Philippians 2.13, and it's God working in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. You allow him in by getting into his word. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's and you know, one of the things that God showed me, just right quick, um, that you're on the couch uh, about your words are life or death. Amen. And... And that became really real to me. In the midst of my worst circumstances, I had to learn how to speak life Amen. Mm -hmm. and not speak death That's over good. Tim, over my marriage. Mm -hmm. and, and I hated it because I, <laughs> I, I wanted to pray and God changed Tim and, and you know, put everything on him in my own words, mm -hmm. in prayer time even. Mm -hmm. But God was teaching me how to speak life and and then how to shut up yeah, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, it's the, the scripture, the the word is alive and active. Amen. Every scripture in the Bible is God breathed. Mm -hmm. the, this is this right here is the key. Yeah. This is the key to the kingdom of God. Amen. That's the exact same uh, thing with our marriage. The, the thing mm -hmm. that was, the, the this was probably the most single revolutionary, most revolutionary thing that the Holy Spirit showed me personally. Mm -hmm. Because I was, uh, even, even in my best times as a Christian over the years, I had some really bad times as a Christian. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> even, in, even in the, uh, you know, even on the tops of the mountains, I was probably one of the world's biggest skeptics to the kind of speak it mentality. Name it, claim it, you know? claim it, grab it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, and I and I just I scoffed a lot at that. I just was like, oh, you know what? You can say all day that that's pink, but it's still blue. You yeah, know. Yeah. I just was. I'm like, ah, that's just you know they, these Pentecostals are losing their mm -hmm. minds. They're just getting kooky. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And when God started to reveal just how powerful our words are. Mm. This was the key. That exactly. that first 48 hours that I talked about where I watched her walking across the room and thought, what an angel. Mm. That had been 48 hours of me telling her she was an angel, she mm. was a princess, she Amen. was beautiful. And I was saying the words even though I did not feel them. Amen. I did not want to be there. <laughs> I did not think I loved her. Mm -hmm. I, I still, received the words. <laughs> she went <laughs> like, like, yes. That's her personality. She's like, I take them anyway. You don't have to <laughs> mean them. I've been thinking it about the time you said it. That's, that's right. right. Finally, you're on the same page. <laughs> and and within 48 hours, I looked at her and thought, wow, what an angel. Yeah. And, and I, that's why I was so shocked because I thought, oh, my goodness, this stuff worked. And the Holy Spirit actually said one day in one we call them the morning writings you know that she would write every day in the journals he actually mentioned I think he mentioned uh, Tony Robbins by name mm. he said the the Tony Robbins is of the world that are out there doing this positive thinking thing well you just speak your own success you know and they're smiling in the camera with their big toothy smiles mm -hmm. He said, they're speaking truth. Mm -hmm. He exactly. said, they're just leaving me out of it. Exactly. He said, they're leaving the most important factor exactly. out of it. And he said, he said, I spoke this world into existence. Exactly. Hebrews he 1, said, my mm -hmm. children have the same power. Mm, that's good. And, and he said, this is the greatest deception that the enemy uh, uses to pull the wool over our eyes mm -hmm. as believers is that he gets us to not believe in that, especially in Western culture. Right. We tend to be very resistant to the supernatural. Mm -hmm. you, go, you go to an African nation or a Latin American nation, they're very comfortable with the supernatural. And that's why there's so many miracles mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. on, on those two continents mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. in modern times. Mm -hmm. But in Western culture, we're very resistant to it. And so we, we feel foolish and we're afraid we'll be ridiculed. But God started showing me how what you speak 
is going to come into existence. And if you are constantly speaking negative, you're speaking death over yourself. Mm -hmm. We actually, as Christians, we, most of us, curse ourselves mm -hmm. our whole lives and we don't even realize it. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12 that God watches over his word to perform it. When you start speaking what God says, he's watching over his word. Psalm 103 verse 20 says that the angels hearken to the voice of the word. Mm -hmm. So when you're speaking the word, you got angelical forces out there on your behalf, fighting mm -hmm. on your behalf. Like he said, one side there was light, one side there was darkness. When he woke up in the morning, which side are you going to call on? When you start speaking the word, you start speaking faith, it's not going to change yes. right then. Yes. But over time, James 3 talks about how your, your tongue sets mm -hmm. the course of your life. You mm -hmm. start speaking life over your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Well, I want to thank you, first of all, for coming tonight, taking time out of your schedule to visit with us here at Ring of Faith. So I know somebody out there is going to be blessed by this Amen. testimony. Somebody's life, so. in Jesus' name, is going to be changed from Amen. this. So thank you for sharing. Oh, oh thank pleasure. you. Yeah. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we're going to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer right now. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 that if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. We talked about that on the show, about how powerful your words are. One confession and believing it could take you from an eternity in hell to an eternity in heaven. Romans 10, 13 says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It isn't about what you have or haven't done. It's all about what Jesus has done for you. John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus is the way because he's the only one that made a way for everyone. I'm going to say this prayer. I encourage you, say it with your mouth to mean it from your heart. Say, Father God. Father God. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask for all your gifts. I ask for all your gifts. I believe I receive it. I believe I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3, no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. You just got born again. <laughs> I encourage you to get into a full Bible teaching church. And if you're in the Nashville, Mount Juliet area, come to Joy Church in Mount Juliet. That's right. And if you've been blessed by this program and you feel led to give financially, go to ringoffaithtv.com. Click on the Donate tab. You'll find all the information you need to help us bring the Word of God to the world. Renew your mind to God's Word by seeing, saying, and believing His promises. And, and that's how you become a knockout artist in life.